Welcome back to Just Scribble for a Passport TN restringing session. So when I did my unboxing of my Moroccan pink, I mentioned that I had a plan for restringing my Duchess, and so I wanted to do that on a video with you guys to share what my plan was. But while I did that, I was also going to restring this one, the Moroccan pink, because I don't like the white elastics on it. I just don't think that they are a good match for my traveler's notebook and my personality. I change out my elastics a lot on my traveler's notebooks, especially my passports, because they're small enough that you can do something fun with them, and you can even change out the elastics based on the season or a holiday as well. And so we're gonna start out actually with the Moroccan pink, just because it is the basic, restring that we're going to do on it. So I'm gonna scooch the Duchess aside and we are going to look at some elastic and see what I think as far as colors for the Moroccan pink. So I was debating between doing a sort of matching pink color for the interior elastics and then a printed for the belly band of the notebook or just do the matching for the whole thing. So I do have other colors also. I pulled out some hot pink, but I didn't really like that. I did pull out some shades of orange. I didn't like that with it as well. And I did pull out this sort of taupey pink beige color, which I think is really pretty, but it's not what I want for this notebook for this time of the year. So I moved all of those aside and now the decision is, do I go with the pink and just put pink on it or do I add a pop of color with the closure elastic with this closure? So so we're gonna restring the interior first and then I will make an executive decision. So the first thing you'll wanna do is take out your elastics. You can use the elastics that they give you as kind of a guide for how long to make the new elastics, but I'm also gonna show you guys how to measure that. I do have videos on my channel sharing this, but it's been a while since I've done it, so I thought we would do it together. So now we have our blank canvas, and we're going to start with the closure elastics, which are gonna go in the center here. And this is the color that I know I'm going to use for that because it will kind of just blend and disappear on the spine and you won't even really notice it. So I'm going to take the little rubber band off of my elastic and we're going to measure. So there are four strings inside, three holes, four strings. And so what you're going to do to measure is you're actually going to measure four lengths plus a little extra to tie off. So that's one, two, three, four, and a little extra. Then we're going to cut it and set that aside. And then we are going to burn the edges just so that it doesn't fray. You'll notice where it's cut, it does fray after a while. You can put clear nail polish on it or you can just rub it near a flame. We are going to rub it near a flame. I normally use a lighter for this, but I didn't have one handy, so I am using my matches. And when you hold it near the flame, it will actually melt those fibers and seal off the end. You don't actually have to, have to actually put it in the flame to get it to do that. So now our ends are all nicely sealed off. Move my match over there, and we are going to restring the interior. Now I like my knot or the interior elastics to be in the center so that I have three strings with no knots on them on each hole and then a second string in the center that has a knot. But if you prefer your knot to be at the front or the back, then you would just move where your starting point is because whatever your starting point is, that is where you are going to have your knot. So I'm going to put my starting point in the center hole and then I'm going to pull it down so that it is a couple inches past the center hole, and then I'm going to string it. So I'm gonna start with the front, and so I'm going to stick it through that hole so that you have a nice loop there. Then I'm going to put it down 
that way. You do want to pull a little bit to make it nice and taut, but you do not want it to be too tight or you will have a pull and a pucker in your notebook. So tight enough that your notebooks will sit nicely, but not so tight that it actually grabs your leather and makes it too tight. I'll show you. So like if I were to pull this, you can see that the leather pulls. You don't want that. You want it to lay flat on its own, kind of like that. Then your piece here is going to go through the same hole that your starting point went through. I'm gonna pull it there. Then you're gonna go through your third hole. I'm gonna slide down to the end. Like that. Make sure that you are nice, nicely tight, but loose enough so that it lays nice. And then you're gonna put this piece through that center hole, which I can't see because I'm at a weird angle on the camera. Oops. So I'm gonna turn it this way so that I can see the hole. If you have trouble getting it through that hole, you can kind of use your finger to pull that other elastic to the side to make space for it, or you can use a tool. So I have this tool, which is made for pulling the elastic through. And so you stick your elastic there and then it kind of feeds it through like a needle, or you can actually use a bobby pin you can use the prong of a fork. You can use, what else can you use? You can use a prong of a fork. You can use a shish kebab skewer. All of those things can help you poke that piece through your notebook. Now I did give a little bit extra on here. So when I tie it, there's going to be a little bit extra. If you don't like that, you can cut it off. I was just kind of roughly gauging what I wanted for length and so you can cut that off if you want. And if it seems too tight or too loose, you just kind of adjust them accordingly to kind of redistribute your elastics like that. So I'm probably gonna cut this little piece a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to seal that piece off real quick so it doesn't fray. So now you have your center elastics, and as you can tell, you barely even see the color. It's very matchy to the color of this leather. So now I have to decide, do I want my exterior to be matching as well, or do I want to go with a pattern? I actually have this pattern on one of my Lady Catherine's, and although I really like it, I think I want to go matching for the closure elastic as well. So for that, all you're gonna do is measure the length of your notebook with enough extra to tie. So about an inch on each side, roughly, will be enough space for you to tie it and ensure that it is tight enough to keep your notebook closed, but not so tight that it will pull on your notebook. A lighter is more helpful because I'm going through a lot of matches, but that's all right. I'm just going to melt the little end part. If you get it too close, like I did, it will actually burn like that, if you can see that. It is not a big deal, but if you don't like it, just cut it off and start again. So on your closure elastic, you're just going to lay the pieces together and loop them through and pull. And there you have your closure, closure elastic. If you like your closure to be looser, then cut a little extra in the length so that you can make it looser. You can also move your knot down once you have it made. You can kind of loosen the knot up and then you can pull it as close to those ends as possible and tighten it so that you have as much closure elastic as possible. It also depends on the elastic you're using. Some is looser than others. So if you don't like the tightness, you can add extra if it is a tighter elastic and if it's a looser elastic, you can put less length as well. So that is my restrung Moroccan pink with the very matching elastic, which I think is really pretty so that the color of this leather really, really pops. 
So that is my simple basic restring. But for Duchess, every time I see this leather, I think about ballet shoes. And I thought it would be really cool if I could figure out a way to make it look kind of like a pair of ballet shoes. And initially I thought if I added some sort of satin ribbon, I could use that to close the notebook, but I didn't want to be tying it all the time. So instead, I bought some pink sparkly elastic and I'm going to use that as the closure because it reminds me of ballet slippers when I do that. And the interior elastic, I'm just going to kind of match to the color of the notebook. So I'm probably gonna use this one because to me that matches quite well and it will just kind of fade into the background. I did have some other colors as well as some patterned ones. You can see that, that would look really nice with this as well. But I wanted to use this and then this. I did also pull, if I can find it. So I did also pull kind of ballet pink that was kind of similar color to this elastic, but I think I'd rather do a more neutral color that also kind of matches and then have the closure be what pops. So we're gonna do the same process. I'm going to take out the elastics. And now we have a blank slate. So once again, we will do four lengths. One, two, three, four, and then a little bit extra to tie. And I'm going to seal off the edges. And then we're going to string this in the same way. So we'll probably fast forward through this just so you guys don't have to watch it all over again. But I'm going to go through the exact same process that I went through before. And then I'm just going to tie it off real quick. Once again, I made it a little bit too long. Normally I'm much better at judging that, but that's okay. We will just cut it off. Now we have pretty spine elastics that are pretty much the same color as the leather. So this material you can buy like headbands that are already made in this and you can use them and you actually don't even have to put them in the hole. You can just wrap them around your notebook or your folio. You can buy ponytail holders that sometimes will work on a pocket or a passport depending on how large they are and how stretchy they are. But this is actually a roll of it. You can buy it in smaller rolls in different prints and patterns and even ones with like ruffly edges at Joanne Fabric and Hobby Lobby and places like that. But basically, you're going to do the same process, but you're going to cut it a little less long because it's super stretchy. So you don't want to have your notebook closure to be too loose. And I'm not going to seal the edges of these, but if for some reason they start to fray or you have issues with them, you can definitely put some clear nail polish or burn the edges in the same way that you did the other one. But I'm going to put this pretty close to almost the exact width of this particular notebook because I am actually going to use a barb. Here it is. I'm going to try to use a barb to put this on. I have not tried that with this type of elastic, but I think that it might work nicely. So we're going to give it a try. So I'm gonna cut the elastic there. And then I am going to put the barb on so that we can then stick it through our notebook. So the purpose of the barb is that you don't have a knot inside. Instead, this little metal barb lays flat and your elastic closure comes out the hole. I do have a video going through the whole process of using barbs and putting them on your folios and your traveler's notebooks. I just have never used it with this large of a piece 
of elastic. And so I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work because this elastic is a lot bigger than a normal piece of elastic, but we are going to try it and see how it fits. So I'm going to grab pliers real quick and then we will do that and we will be done. So when you put your elastic in, you put it in this little spoon part with the ends coming out the other side. So I'm going to try to kind of fold this to make it just a little bit smaller so that it lays nicely in the little spoon area and hopefully I'll be able to crimp it down nicely without too much trouble. I'm going to find out. Like I said, these particular barbs are actually not made for this size of elastic, so this may not go as easily as it goes with regular TN elastic, but hopefully it will work okay. So I used these pliers to just kind of hold the elastic in a little bit just because it is so thick and I kind of rolled it up and I want to be able to get the other piece closed around it nicely. Once I get it started, then I will move them out of the way. So then you just kind of pinch it. Ignore my husband's phone ringing in the other room. They're watching a movie and we are been checking all day on friends that were affected by the hurricane. So we have a lot of people we've been waiting for phone calls from. So you just pinch it to kind of seal it around your elastic. And it actually worked out pretty much okay, I think, for this. And then your elastic will sit like this, and then this will lay flat against your notebook. Now, because this elastic is bigger and thicker, it's going to be a little bit harder to get through the hole. So one thing you can do is stick the tip corner of it through and kind of grab it with your fingernails and then pull the rest of it through. You can also use a tool like I showed, or you can use a shish kebab skewer, basically kind of like the tip of these. And you're gonna use that to kind of shove the elastic through the hole. A fork prong works for that too. Or bobby pins work in the same way as this, where you kind of use them to hold on to the elastic and then you shove the bobby pin through the hole and you're kind of pulling the elastic with it. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to pull this taut and lay it flat. And so you'll see that it won't lay as flat as it would if I had normal elastic in it because this elastic is thicker, but it lays fairly flat against there. And then now I have this super cute, sparkly ballet inspired closure. And I think it looks so cute. I'm super happy with it. I am thinking about making either some sort of little bow paper clip or some sort of decor for the side to put a little bow on it, but I thought this looked like a pair of ballet shoes. That's kind of what inspired me and what it reminded me of, and this is the look that I was going for for my notebook to show that. So I hope you liked this little video showing how to restring your traveler's notebooks. I do have other videos showing the same thing on my channel in, in my, my tips and tricks playlist. So make sure you check that out if you want more detailed information on restringing your traveler's notebook, measuring the elastic and all of that. But I do hope you enjoyed this little video of a standard restringing and a specialty restringing of my Moroccan Pink and Duchess Passport Traveler's Notebooks from Chic Sparrow. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below and I will definitely get back with you. Give me a thumbs up if you did like this video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. And don't forget to just scribble.